Holy hell, what a Wednesday we just had. If you missed it, CA sneakily announced the next DLC for Total Warhammer 2, sort of, and we know for a fact that it'll be a Wood Elf versus someone Lord pack, along with some other really neat details. We'll go over what we do know, as well as what we able to, uh, might be able to glean with some investigation, so get comfy with a big old glass of milk and let's go. Wow. Before we get started, I'm going to leave links to the last two videos I covered regarding the DLC possibilities, which, for the record, I frigging nailed, I'd just like to point out, and uh, Wood Elf Legendary Lords. I don't want to rehash those videos all in here, so if you haven't seen them, I might suggest checking them out first before continuing on with this one, just so you don't feel lost or abandoned. If you've already seen them though, we'll get uh, over to the core announcement itself first. So regardless of whether or not you buy anything, there will be a free LC hero and a game update. Now the hero thing is interesting as it doesn't specify who or even which faction, just that it's coming. We'll take a pretty deep dive into this later and I promise there's some hidden information on this one that's not being talked about, but for now let's just continue on. If all you own is Total Warhammer 2 and you buy the Lord Pack, you'll get the two legendary Lords along with accompanying units, sub-factions and mounts, and of course it will unlock those sub-factions to use in the Vortex even if you don't own the original Wood Elf Campaign Pack. If you also own Total Warhammer 1, it will provide an old world update for the Wood Elves as well, which is very appreciated because I think some of us might actually be more excited for the update than the actual Legendary Lord. Lastly, if you own everything, Total Warhammer 2, 1, and Realm of the Wood Elves, and you buy the new DLC, you will get everything before plus another Legendary Lord, even more units, a lore of magic, and characters for Mortal Empires. Again, there's an interesting implication at the end there that we'll pull apart later on. So as a quick recap, CA is making two Legendary Lords for the Wood Elves, plus a Legendary Lord for the other half of the Lord Black, plus new units, mounts, characters, and an Old World update, uh, plus a free LC hero. This is shaping up to possibly be the biggest Lord Pack in history. And before we continue, I also want to point out something CA says at the end of their announcement because I think it's important. They're really hoping that the community likes this because they want to make sure they can continue doing DLC for DLC in the future. And just as a personal opinion, I really hope the community does appreciate it, because it's the only way we're going to get all the content as possible in the future. Alright, so that's the super obvious stuff out of the way. Like I said, there's a bunch of hidden stuff if you sort of read between the lines, so let's put on our detective caps and delve into that. First up, the free LC hero. Now first and foremost, I've seen a number of people assuming it'll be a Wood Elf hero. This is almost assuredly incorrect, because the free LC character is coming even if you don't buy the DLC at all which would make it entirely pointless for a large chunk of the player base. In fact, I don't ever recall seeing a free LC thing for paid stuff, so let's narrow down the free LC stuff to Game 2 Races or possibly Bretonia. Now, two possibilities exist for the hero, that they're a new hero class or that they're a legendary hero. If it's the former, that one's actually pretty easy. It's either got to be a Lizardmen hero or a Bretonian one. The Lizardmen are the only core to, uh, Game 2 race who don't have four hero types already, meaning that they're the only one who even can take another hero class. If we toss Bretonia into the mix, they still only have two hero types, so giving them might also work out, though I'm less inclined to believe Bretonia gets two free LC additions in the same year. However, there's also the possibility that they aren't a hero class at all, but rather a specifically named legendary hero. And if that's the case, then who are they? Well, basically all bets are off, because it could be so many possibilities, but I would suggest it's either a Skaven or a Dark Elf character. Why do I think this? Because the Skaven or the Dark Elves are almost assuredly the second half of the DLC, so why not couple the free LC character into whichever one is being updated or isn't being updated. I have a theory about who it is if it is a legendary hero, but I'm going to save them for the end of the video just so it doesn't spoil other things. Now, for the additional Legendary Lord mentioned if you own the original Wood Elves campaign, I think I feel fairly comforting, uh, comfortable narrowing it down to Ariel. How did I arrive at this particular conclusion? A few different reasons combined. First and foremost, we know it's a her, thanks to the wording in the announcement, and while the Wood Elves have a lot of female characters left, Nyeth, Draika, Ariel, and both of the Sisters of Twilight, we can immediately take the sisters out of the running because the wording is for her, not them. Of the remaining three, my first instinct was actually to be Draika, because they were mentioned to be coming with all the trimmings, which I assumed was a double entendre, trimmings in this case meaning with everything you could ever want, but also something that you do to a tree. However, it's the second bit of data that made me think it will be Ariel. This new legendary lord will only be present in Mortal Empires. Know what else is only in Mortal Empires? Athaloran. Draika, we know for a fact, was exiled from Athel Lauren, so having her exclusive to the Mortal Empires map would make next to no sense whatsoever. 
Another justification is the fact that we're apparently getting a new lore of magic with the extra character, and Draka only uses the standard lore of shadows. Only Nyeth and Ariel would have access to something different. Nyeth was a long shot in the first place, and once again, her later lore has her roaming everywhere with Scarlock's archers, not sitting in Alpha Lauren, so I think the odds are already exceedingly stacked against her, and then those odds get even worse when you consider that her special lore of magic, Divination, is 100% entirely exclusive to her, not being used by any other lord or hero in the entire setting, and not even really having tabletop rules specific to it. So again, I really, really can't imagine that Nyeth is the other pick. So, the only one of the three who is sitting in Athel Lauren is Ariel. This is pretty central to her lore, in fact, so I'd be willing to bet a toonie she's our extra legendary lord. Also, right up until 8th edition, the lore of Athel Lauren was a thing for, well, Athel Lauren mages, which means our new lore of magic is actually super easy to justify with Ariel as well. So, if Ariel's the extra legendary lord, then who's the main legendary lord added in by the faction pack itself? Well, let's assume that they're plucking from the 8th edition lords before they go looking into the really minor stuff. Now, the Wood Elves only have 5 8th edition lords in the first place. Orion, Durthu, Sisters of Twilight, Araloth, and Draka. The first two legendary lords are already in the game, so that narrows us down to the last three. Personally, I hope it isn't Araloth for reasons I've already covered in previous videos, but frankly, I consider him the least likely option anyways because he really doesn't add anything to the game, even if there's nothing really preventing them from adding him. Now, to be fair, Draka also wouldn't really add much to the Legendary Lords roster because she essentially just plays as a faster, angrier Durthu with Lore of Shadows. However, she has some really fun lore and some really interesting interactions with the other Wood Elf factions, and also she'd be hilariously easy to justify in the Vortex campaign. New stuff like for uh, Forest Spirits, Blood Sedges, and Sprites would be very easy to justify with her, and while her battle mechanics wouldn't be too interesting, having her be a horde faction or have other similar mechanics would be extremely easy to justify with her, with her being exiled and all. And depending on who the other faction is, she could even still be somewhat easy to justify in a rivalry as well, though we'll touch upon that towards the end of the video. The other possibility is the Sisters of Twilight, and boy oh boy, I really hope they're it. Apart from the fact that they'd be very different, not just from every other Wood Elf Legendary Lord, they'd be different from every Legendary Lord in the game. They would also be very easy to toss into the Vortex campaign, being that they're Wanderers in the first place, and a pair of Lords with two differing focuses and the ability to revive each other when one falls is just begging to be put into the game. Even more so than Draka, the campaign possibilities are absolutely incredible with them. Not to mention, earlier it mentioned that new mounts would be um, one of the things added in. Well, mount options like Forest Dragons and Great Eagles would be almost assured with them, given that their own mounts are those two things. And there's a ton of new units and variants that could be very easily tied in with them. Lastly, their rivalry potential with the other two factions is far, far easier to justify than Draka's is. Now, like I said, I'm not going to go into all the Wood Elf named characters because I don't think any of them have as good of odds as those two previous ones, but if you do want to check out some more of them, like I said, there will be a link to my Wood Elf Legendary Lords videos down below. But for a moment, let's just circle back to that lore of Athaloran for a moment. I'm not going to get into all the spells, nor even which six spells I think they'll select. I just want to talk about what it is because it has some really interesting implications as well. Much of the stuff in the lore of Athaloran is actually specifically about battlefield manipulation. Turning the forests into weapons, making poisonous terrain, embedding oneself into a tree for protection, and so on. As we literally just spoke about in our last video, CA has already said that they plan on adding battlefield effects to Total Warhammer in the future at some point anyways, and they've already got them being put into Total War Troy. Could this be our first taste of such a system in Total Warhammer? I have no idea to be perfectly honest with you, but I would really, really love for that to be the case. Lastly, let's take a look at the other giant question mark, who's the second half of the DLC, like who's the rival? I think it's basically a two horse race between the Skaven and the Dark Elves. I've seen some people suggest the Beastmen, and that's optimistic to say the least. The Beastmen need a pretty dramatic update of their own, and there's not much hope of them getting it at the same time, as especially with the Wood Elves apparently being the focus of this one. So I would say just completely axe that possibility right now, there is next to no chance that that happens. Of the two others, the Skaven or the Dark Elves, I would personally argue that the former makes more sense than the latter, because the Skaven have a history with the Wood Elves, they are natural enemies. On top of that, the Skaven are very obviously missing a great clan, a legendary lord, and several obvious units, so they'll also have that going in their favor as well. The Dark Elves still technically could be a second choice, especially if I'm wrong about Ariel and she is the main DLC pick, 
In which case, with her, a natural hatred of the Dark Elves is pretty par for the course. But again, it strikes me as quite a lot of what-ifs just to get to that point. So assuming it is the Skaven, that means we're essentially looking at either a Draka vs. Throt or a Sisters of Twilight vs. Throt. And to me personally, while they both seem probable, I think it's more likely that it will be the latter. Draka does hate absolutely everyone, Skaven included, so pitting her against literally anyone does make sense. However, the sisters are staunch defenders of Athel Lorem, so having them fight potential threats such as the Skaven makes a little bit more sense to me. Uh, for Throt the Unclean, having him look for new, magically enhanced creatures from Athel Lorem would be a very, very easy solution to put him onto a collision course with either of those two picks. Lastly, there's also a really interesting note about what this means for the next DLC for Total Warhammer 2 as well. My previous guess was Wood Elves vs Skaven with a Dark Elf free LC. But given that the Dark Elves don't appear in this at all, or potentially that the Skaven don't appear in this at all, that would leave them as the only Game 2 faction without 5 Legendary Lords. It also means, assuming that this DLC goes well, previous DLC factions are now back on the table as Lord Pack options. Which means, I would argue, we can expect one more Lord Pack after this, of Dark Elves versus someone, and that someone to me makes the most sense to be the Beastmen in my eyes. I'll delve into this theory in another video very soon, but I think it makes perfect sense when you actually start to consider the data. Anyways, to recap, I think the Lord Pack will be the Sisters of Twilight versus Throt the Unclean, with the extra Wood Elf Legendary Lord being Ariel. The free LC hero I suspect will be a generic hero for Bretonia or Lizardmen, though if it's a legendary hero I would argue it's Squeal Nawtooth. That's going to wrap it up for this particular video. I'm going to take a deeper dive into what to expect for this next DLC in the video coming on Tuesday. As always though, I want to thank you for hanging out with me and I'll see you all soon.